So I'm going to move on to topic number two today. We have Marcus Niemelainen, William Legison, and Philip Broberg as current call-ups for the Edmonton Oilers with Duncan Keith and Chris Russell out. Mike, who do you think stays and who do you think goes when Duncan Keith and Chris Russell return? Well, the only thing that I see is Chris Russell. Is he going to be able to stay healthy, right? You know, he's got he, he's he's a fighter. He's tenacious. You know, he, he's a great defender as far as shot blocking. But I don't know if you don't maybe limit the amount of time that he has and kind of save him for the postseason because... I'm sorry. I think that with what Woodcroft is doing and with the way that the boys are playing now, they're right in the thick of it. I can't see us not uh, uh, making it into the postseason, right? Um, as far as Philip Roberg, I think he needs to go and get seasoned some more. Um, I can tell that with Woodcroft and Manson, he feels more comfortable and they're putting him in positions to be successful. And I like that. I just think out of those three he doesn't bring what my new favorite defenseman brings, which is Nima Linen. I don't think this kid leaves the squad at all. I don't think he... Yeah, I, I think that he's played well enough. And I loved the fact that he got fined. You know why? Because that means somebody gives a shit, right? Like, these guys are finally sticking up for each, uh, each other. Vander Kane has been sticking up for guys. Darnell Nur uh, Nurse has been sticking up for guys to an extent, but you got Nima Linen, and he's like he's making everybody else want to hit people, right? Evander Kane and Nima Linen have been hitting people left, right, and center. I took Nima Linen in my fantasy for the last week and a half, not because he scores points, not because he's going to get assists. It's because he's getting like five, six hits a night, right? Nima Linen is exactly what our defense needs because I'm sorry, our defense was a bunch of pussies running around out there. They they weren't they weren't doing true, anything. True. You know, you talk yeah. about playing you know easy to play against. I'm sorry, Nima Linen standing you up at the blue line and putting you on your ass. Uh, that's a little bit harder to play against. Evander Kane taking you out in the corner. You're right. Hey, I know some of his hits can be suspect, but he's on our team now. So I don't give a shit about how suspect they are. Well, they as long as he's not hurt anybody, yeah. right? Like, I'm sorry, that, that jab on that, that pecker had the other night, that's exactly what we want out of him. He's not going to get suspended for it, but the dude kind of dove a little bit, and he and he embellished on, on, on the hit. But it was, a, it was an awesome punch. The both wanted to fight, but the linesman wouldn't get out of the way. Like, to me, that's just poor officiating again. But as far as who's going to stay and who's going to go, I like Duncan Keith. Uh, I, I think he comes back into the mix just because his veteran leadership for these young guys is 100%. But I think uh, as far as going back down, Nima Linden doesn't go anywhere. I think you, you sporadically use Chris Russell if you can, uh, but you save him for the postseason or for the, the end of the year push. I think he just kind of – you kind of – get him into a few games before the end of the season and then uh, roll with it that way. I, I'm sorry. I, I'd rather I'd rather see Barry uh, traded uh, and bring Chris Russell in that way so that you can keep Nima Linen on the uh, playing uh, with Duncan Keith because I, I like that scenario better, if, especially if the person that you trade Barry out for is another stay-at-home defenseman that can, you know, rock him and sock him just like, uh, you know, like a Susie or an Alexiak type defenseman that, you know, can play those Larson type minutes. Like, man, I, I, I hate the fact that what happened to Larson and his family, you know, made him make this decision of wanting to, you know, uh, start over with a fresh new team and a fresh new look because that's the type of defenseman we're, we're missing right now. But it's also the type of defenseman that I'm seeing this Nemo line and B. We don't need him to score goals. We've got the two best players in the world. We've got Leon Dreisaitl and his co-star Connor McDavid, right? on our team right now, and I'm sorry, I, I'm a dry settle guy, right? I love Connor, I love the fact he's on our team, but without dry settle, it's no different than, you know, Crosby and Malkin, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's like, you know, salt and pepper, they, they need to go together, right? Um, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how things go and play out here in a month's time uh, uh, with the trade deadline. But as far as being healthy, I don't know. I, I, I still don't think that Chris Russell brings enough to warrant him, you know, knocking Nima Linen out of the lineup? I really don't. What do you think? I Yeah, no, I think they're going to keep Nima Linen and Legacy up. I think Broberg will be the Oh, one I didn't that... even talk about Bill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Broberg's going to go down, though, I think. 
Like he's been, he hasn't been bad, but I think he's going to go back to Bakersfield. I think Niemelainen and Legison stay. Legison might go down if Russell's back full time, but Russell's had a real injury plague season, so I won't be surprised if Russell isn't 100% for the rest of the year. I don't think Niemelainen is going anywhere. Uh, for as far as moving Tyson Berry, I think the Oilers are going to try and move Tyson Berry because I think they want to add to the right side. A uh, trade I talked about in a trade proposal video early last week was bringing in uh, defenseman Scott Mayfield, who plays on the right side, Semyon Varlamov, and Cal Clutterbuck for the bottom six, yeah. and then moving out Tyson Berry and Miko Koskinen. Because right now we know the Oilers pretty much have to do money-in, money-out type deals for the rest of the way. That's pretty close. It was both in the $9 million range coming in, going out. So I think you could work it out from there. But, I mean, that's a fan trade, right? I don't know well, if that's an actual trade they're looking at. But one of the other ones that we talked about was Dave yeah. Manson's son, right? Yeah, Josh is Manson, there yeah. is there a possibility that we could see Dave Manson's son? I know he had a very small window of teams that he wanted to go play for. But yeah. do you think that possibly we could get Manson's son? He's a huge dude. Like, he's a, you know, to have him... In the, in the back there, it'd be like the Twin Towers with him and Nemo Linen. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, apparently all the Canadian teams were on his no-trade list because he's got a whatever team no-trade list. But obviously with his dad playing here now, or dad coaching here now, I don't know if that changes things. Uh, I've had one commenter, Robert, say maybe because his dad's here, he won't want to come here. I don't want to play for my father. But <laughs> if Fair he enough. likes his dad and wants to play under his dad, like the Oilers could be that team, but... We'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. Josh Manson is a pending UFA, so if it doesn't work out at the trade deadline, he is maybe a target the Oilers could go after in the summer if they can't get him now. But see what happens there.